Hey, so yeah, the topic of tonight, gold factor. We're going to talk a little bit about the early science behind this one and some of the studies that we did before it even came out on the marketplace. And then the study that we just finished up this past year and released at convention. And so you'll have all the up-to-date information on what this wonderful product can do. And I'll I'll just kind of preface this by saying these are a couple things we know that this product can do, but the potential is much greater than that. And there are still a lot of other things that we could investigate with this and may do at some point down the road as it continues to progress and as we continue to see where the potentials are for this product. So let's talk a little bit about what Gold Factor is. And I'm going to go a little bit on a tangent here to talk about how it's made, because I think this is one of the things that really differentiates Gold Factor from other gold liquids that are in the marketplace and really what makes it stand out above all of those things. But when it comes down to it, this is really just two things. It's gold crystals and ultra pure water, those two items. This is something, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, was developed by another company. They had other aspirations for it. And it was one that actually David Lisenby had some connections with. And so with that connection, then we had the opportunity to also have this as a supplement. And in a nutshell, this kind of deals with cellular vitality. And we'll talk a little bit more what that means and why we put it that way. But everything you see kind of listed down below that then is just the, if you will, kind of the side effects of the cellular vitality side of things. So things with memory, mental acuity, benefits with your DNA. And then, of course, I also mentioned the safety of this one because of the way this is made and it was new in this space. We spent the hundreds of thousands of dollars and the whole year it takes to go through what is really a series of three different toxicity tests proving the safety of this product. So all that's the background that takes place years before anything ever shows up in the marketplace. Let's talk a little bit about aging. There's something that unfortunately we all have to deal with. Some of us have dealt with more of it than others, but this is something that happens to all of the 37 or so trillion cells that make up your body. And as we age, I think you all already kind of know this, you see the loss in vitality and the, the kind of, you know, put it in plain terms, the firmness, right, the strength, all of those kind of things. This is life kind of catching up with you. Some of it has to do with oxidative stress, which we'll talk a little bit as we go along here. And others has to do with aging through the genetic side of things, which we'll also talk about as we get through this as well. And now this can kind of show as stiffness and losses in mobility and inability to kind of just function like you used to. You don't remember things as well. You're not as quick witted. You know, things just don't come to you like they did. So, you know, the, Chasing after that fountain of youth is one of the, probably the major thing we'll talk about when we're talking about gold factor. Uh, as I mentioned, that vitality thing, it really kind of looks at, it's more or less like an activator of your cells. And let's see, it kind of gives you, listed here is the burst of power, but what, let's talk a little bit about what that really means. And I kind of got ahead of myself here so why I'm kind of stumbling. I forgot to talk about how it's made. I got I mentioned that and then I just went on ahead and skipped over it. So let me actually, yeah, we'll just talk about it this way. So let's talk about how it's made first before I dive into the rest of this stuff. So first, let's talk about how other products are made. Typically, a liquid gold product is a combination of a gold compound. So it'll be gold bound with something else. So it, usually it's just two things together, one of which is gold. Then you'll have an acid of some sort and usually a couple other compounds in there to speed up the reaction to make it easier. And in the process, what you end up doing is these other things work together. The acid kind of breaks things apart and you end up with free gold atoms, which then kind of clump together to form gold crystals. Now, what you also have then is all of the other compounds all mixed in that solution with it. 
And as we talk about what gold does in the body and how we think it works, what's really important is the fact that the gold crystals are clean, that they have not got anything surrounding them, blocking them, covering that cold, that gold surface up. And when you make it with a chemical reaction, you still have all of those other things in the mix, which get in the way of letting the gold do its thing. So gold factor is made differently. As I mentioned in the beginning, just the two ingredients. There's great effort put into cleaning the water. So this is, it, you know, it starts out really as municipal water that you get out of your tap, but then it goes through a number of really refined and precise filtration and separation techniques to get rid of all the minerals, all the chemicals, whatever else might be present. So this is what we refer to as ultra pure water. It has almost no contaminants of any kind in it whatsoever. It's basically as pure water as we can currently physically make. That then goes through a trough type setup where the flow rate of the water and the temperature of the water are tightly managed. And as it flows through this trough, you have gold rods spaced at certain intervals. And each of those rods has tied to an electrical source. And so electricity is passing through those rods at a certain current, a certain voltage. All of this stuff is what they spent years working out. And so they can precisely control at each of those gold rod locations, how much gold is being released from the rod into the water. So between how fast the water is flowing and how much current and the type of current going through the rod then determines the concentration of the gold in the water as it passes through. That's all done in a very clean room. And you've seen the pictures of how they make microchips and they're all in the bunny suits and all that same kind of setup. Again, this has to be kept pure and clean. We don't want anything to foul the surface of those gold crystals as they're coming off of those pure gold rods. So not only is water clean, but the environment that it's run in is clean. It's all really tightly managed. And so this is the main difference. When you get the end result here, you get this lightly pink water that has all of this gold in it and nothing else. And so you're left with a very pure, a very clean gold crystal delicately suspended in water. And I use the delicate suspension there because that's really what it is. It is those gold crystals just kind of very delicately floating within the water. And it doesn't take a whole lot to cause that suspension to break and for those gold crystals to come out. The easiest example of that would be freezing. Right? If you take the gold factor and you freeze it, once it thaws, you're going to see that it's now a clear bottle of water with maybe a light gray dust on the bottom of the bottle. If that color changes, then you know you've lost that delicate suspension. That's kind of your first clue. And it's actually one of the tests we use to look at the purity as well as the consistency and the, the stability of gold factor. It's a little more in depth than just looking at it and saying, yep, that still looks pink. It's got a number and a, pro a protocol associated with it. So we know that we've got a, the same process, the same quality of product every time. And it's what we use as it sits in our stability chambers and we make sure that it has the shelf life and everything else. So, but that's just a really rough way for all of you to look at it and still be able to determine whether or not your product is still usable. That color change is your first clue. All right. So, sorry, I got a little bit off there and in the wrong spot on it, but hopefully that's going to give you a little bit of detail of what gold factor is and why it's different than everything else. And when we talk about what it does, I'll come back to why that clean surface is so important. And so as an activator of your cells, gold factor ultimately serves its role as what we call a catalyst. Now, if you had high school chemistry and you remember what catalyst means, it's a component in a chemical reaction that eases the reaction. It reduces the energy burden required to complete that reaction. However, in the process, it is not consumed. So what that means is that the catalyst, gold factor, can then be used over and over and over and over again for multiple reactions and still perform that same function. 
Now, as a catalyst, and I want to mention kind of the energy burden of things, everything your body does requires some amount of energy input to get whatever the desired output is. Gold factor sits in the middle of that reaction and it lowers the energy need. So you can do the same amount of work with less energy. And that's why I kind of say that burst of power is now your body's able to do at you know, minimum here, the same amount of work for, with using less energy, or you can use the same amount of energy and produce even more work. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. And that's why he says it helps immune set or it helps your body cells function more optimally, right? Because we're reducing the amount of energy that the cells need to perform whatever task it is they're doing. And as kind of talked about in the beginning, this is a Nobel Prize winning discovery. We'll talk about some of the more details on this as we go through this. I'm going to start off and talk about an enzyme called telomerase. So this is that Nobel Prize winning discovery. Telomerase is an enzyme in every cell in your body. It is there to help protect your DNA. So your DNA, as you all know, is those long double stranded. You kind of see it in the bottom corner here. And it's your genetic code. It is what makes you, you, what determines your hair color, your eye color, now the shape of your toes. All that stuff is in your DNA. And your body uses the DNA within the cells to make all of the proteins and all the other things that cells need to function. Well, every time your cells divide, there's little things at the end of your DNA called telomeres, and they shorten with each division. Now, telomeres technically are a piece of your DNA, but they don't contain any actual genetic information. They're just there as kind of protectants. Right? The, the best analogy is the little caps on the end of your shoelaces. Right? It's not really there to function as a shoelace, but it protects the end from fraying and causing problems, makes it easier for you to lace your shoes. Right? DNA, the tel telomeres are basically that same function. Right? It's not genetic code, but it's there at the end. So as the DNA and the cells divide, you're not losing genetic information. Well, at some point, those telomeres shorten so much that they can no longer effectively protect your DNA. And your cell has methods in place. When that happens, it goes into a series of events that just called programmed cell death. The big fancy word for that is apoptosis. But this is a process that your cells go through to basically get themselves out of the mix so that they can't or they won't replicate with bad or damaged DNA. So as your telomeres shorten, then your cells go through this process and eventually they just take themselves out of the picture when the telomeres get short enough. So pretty easy connection to draw here is you lengthen those telomeres, then you lengthen the life of that cell. It can go through more divisions before it's going to go through that cell death cycle. Telomerase is the enzyme that performs that function and it works better in some cell types than others. And that's why you have some cells that live longer than others. Or at least that's one reason why some cells live longer than others. And so it's again, there to help protect your DNA. So we did some research with gold factor and both telomeres and telomerase. And we'll kind of go through, talk about those here next. So what you're seeing here is a graph showing the results of this study. And you can see there are two competing top selling brands of liquid gold products, Gold Factor. And then all the way over on the right here is what happens with no treatment. I'm going to kind of start with that right hand side first. So here you're looking at each different color bar. So brown to yellow to the light brown to the pink is a different number of cell divisions. You can see on the slide here, they kind of call them passages. So it goes from passage two in the dark brown to passage 15. So that's, it's divided 15 times at this point. And so this is looking at the telomerase activity 
with each of those divisions. And normally, as the cell ages, both the telomeres and the telomerase decrease. And that's what you're seeing in the no treatment side of things. Now, so the first thing you're going to notice with regardless of the gold, there's an increase in telomerase activity as the number of divisions increase. So here we're going against the natural process of things just by having the presence of gold in the mix. And you can see from this that the gold factor has done as well, and in most cases, better than the competing products in increasing that telomerase activity. And the other key thing to note here is that increase is biggest at the highest number of divisions, right? So passage 15, as it's termed here, is where you see the highest telomerase activity. So pretty cool stuff. You're seeing here the kind of longevity benefits associated with the gold crystals and the gold factor itself. All right. Um, kind of the key points here we talked about, and we'll kind of go into more detail with those here, is that gold is precious. I think everyone kind of understands that. Pure and powerful. And the purity, it goes along with that cleanliness. So every drop of gold factor contains billions of individual gold crystals. Every one of those crystal, crystals is capable of participating in millions of individual reactions within your body. Remember, a catalyst isn't consumed in the reaction. It's there to be reused over and over and over again. And each of those then trillions of cells, trillions of reactions can be fed by a single ounce of gold factor. So kind of the, the end take home message here is there's enough gold factor in each ounce to essentially impact the reactions of every cell in your body. And each of those gold crystals, and here's where the numbers get really huge, is capable of participating in 4,600 different reactions almost simultaneously. So this is capable of, here it's listed as an electron transfer, which is one of the ways that it aids in the catalyst reaction. That can happen many, many times. Now, here's the catch. You have to have a clean surface for all of this to take place at this frequency, at these numbers, at that rate of reaction. As soon as you have anything that covers up or fouls that surface, you then automatically reduce the ability of the gold crystals to participate in these reactions. And this is why the manufacturing process that we use for gold fast factor is so important and really what makes this kind of leaps and bounds better than anything else out there there's nothing else floating around in the gold factor to kind of mess that up. It's all a very clean surface, so it can take full advantage and be utilized this many times in this many reactions and therefore provide the greatest potential benefit and still maintain a really high level of safety. And so hopefully that kind of ties in the importance of how it's manufactured with why it works so well. So looking at the gold factor of the body, we've kind of already talked a lot about the different aspects here. This is like a lot of things, something that we currently believe to be absorbed through the gut. So you're, you're going to swallow it. Some of it will be absorbed in the stomach where the water kind of gets absorbed. Some will take place in the small intestine where a lot of other things are absorbed, but eventually it's going to make its way into the bloodstream where it's then distributed throughout the body and then can have its various effects on the different aspects anywhere throughout the body. Now, this is where I'd take a, another little tangent and talk a little bit about why you're directed to take this on an empty stomach. And some of you have probably already connected the dots on this, but if you have anything in your stomach, one, you, it has the potential to block that delicate suspension, right? So anything else in there can make the gold fall out of the solution. 
But probably more importantly, is it's something that can cover up and kind of mess with that clean surface. And so that's why it's important when you take olfactor, you do it on an empty stomach so that it's absorbed as cleanly as possible. It can maintain as much of that activity as possible. And then as it's distributed throughout the body, you get that catalyst function. That's the activation, the cellular vitality that we talked about. But it also has an ability to serve as an antioxidant. So I mentioned one of the causes of aging is oxidative stress. And it's something we all face every single day, whether it's from the oxygen we breathe, the sunlight we're exposed to, any of the chemicals that we come in contact with, you know, whether it's touch, breath, whatever it might be, don't all live in the most clean and toxin-free environments. So all of those things contribute to our oxidative stress. And some of the research we've done shows that gold factor has some antioxidant capabilities in addition to what we've talked about in, in terms of the telomerase and, and telomere length effects. And then the last thing, which again, we've kind of touched on, but not in detail, is dealing with the actual energy cycle of your cells. Now, as I mentioned, every cell in the body uses energy to do whatever it is that its job. Well, in addition to that, every cell in the body has to make its own energy. And it does that within the mitochondria using a, a cycle that is dependent on a compound called NAD. Nicotine, adenine, dinucleotide, for those of you that are taking notes and want an extra gold star for spelling it right at the end. But this compound is key in that energy production cycle. And this is one of the areas that we've been able to show that gold factor uh, acts on directly. So it is lowering the energy requirement for your body to produce energy. I kind of say that again because it sounds like I'm kind of talking in a circle on them. But just like you and me, right? If you want energy, we got to eat something. Well, it takes energy to eat. It takes energy to make dinner, right? Same thing. Your cells require some energy to make the energy that it needs to survive. And by having gold factor and a catalyst function, it then lowers the cost of making energy for the cell. So bottom line is it's able to make more energy with the same effort. And that then is where you get the what listed here is cellular vigor, the vitality, all those other things, because every cell in the body has to make its own energy. And if it can do that more efficiently, then that's going to impact everything else that the cell does. Well, one of the things that they first started looking at for gold factor was its impact on mental acuity and brain performance. We'll talk about some studies here in just a sec that looked at a couple aspects of that. But these are kind of some of the claims that go along with that. So mental acuity and memory, neuronal plasticity. This is an interesting, it's kind of one of those fancy terms but really, this means your brain's ability to adapt and shape itself based on your environment. And it's just kind of a quick little aside. You're born with all the brain cells you're ever going to get. Now, you can do lots of things to get rid of those brain cells. But they ain't growing back. So take good care of the ones you've got. But if you're not getting new brain cells, then how do you remember new things? How do you learn new stuff? You keep packing more and more stuff in there, but you're not adding cells. So how do you keep those memories? Well, current theory suggests that it's actually the connections between brain cells, which are responsible for making and keeping memories. So whatever, if you're learning a new language, whatever, all you're doing is creating new connections from one nerve cell to the next. And those connections then are how your brain stores and creates memory and learning. And so neuronal plasticity then is kind of a catch-all term for how well your brain is able to create and maintain these new connections. And we'll, we'll show you in the research here how goal factor helps in that. And that kind of goes along the same thing, the regenerative pathways. When you lose memories or you have some kind of brain injury or whatever, you may have lost some cells in the process, but most of what you lost were those connections. Right? These are really tiny connections. 
it doesn't take a lot of force to snap some of these little tiny kind of web-like connections between brain cells. So we did a series of two studies, and here you're looking at normal brain cells. So these are brain cells under normal conditions and looking at them with and without the gold factor present. Now, again, the gold factor is your pink lines and no treatment is the brown ones. Neuronal survival. So just looking how well, how long those nerve cells last. And this kind of goes back to the telomere discussion we had earlier. My gold factor helping that, then the nerve cells tend to live a little bit longer. Neurite growth. So neurite are those connections that grow from one nerve cell to the next. These little kind of tendrils, tentacles, whatever you want to call them. They're just little web-like connections from one nerve cell to the next. Being able to enhance the neurite growth then is what is thought physiologically to be responsible for the benefits in terms of memory and mental acuity kind of things. You can see here, this has more than doubled the event of neurite growth. So it's greatly aiding the body in being able to create those connections. Synaptic numbers are related. So you have two nerve cells and they want to create a connection to each other. They'll start and make these little dendrites, these neurites, and they will grow right next to each other. And they won't quite touch, but the little space right between them is what's called a synapse. And that's where chemical messages are passed back and forth from one nerve cell to the next. And so you're growing the neurites better and you're creating more actual connections. So one neurite connecting to the next neurite where you can then have a transfer of information between nerve cells. And again, more than double in that increase in synaptic numbers. So both of these last two then showing an increased ability for these nerve cells to communicate with each other, to form those connections, which then at least theoretically pay off in terms of memory, cognition, all those kind of benefits. Now, the same thing happens if you stress the nerve cells. So these are what we refer to as deprived brain cells. So we've withheld some of the nutrition and required uh, nutrients and whatnot from these brain cells. So they're living in a stressed state. And you can see in here, you're looking at a decrease in activity. And in this sense, you're seeing less of a decrease when the gold factor is present. So kind of flipping things a little bit you're again seeing an increase in neuronal survival. So here it's depicted as a decrease in neuronal death, if that makes sense. Hopefully I'm not confusing everybody with this. Bottom line, again, you're seeing the same thing you saw before in the normal cells, better survivability for the nerves and a better ability to form those neurites. So again, the connections between brain cells. So whether you're healthy, whether you're stressed, you're seeing a similar effect on brain cells and again, leading to those claims that have to deal with mental acuity, memory, focus, attention, neural, neuronal plasticity, the fancy word for today. So we're going to kind of sum up everything we've talked about so far. And this is, I don't want to call it old research because this is still a relatively new product, but maybe we'll call it older or initial research that we have on this. You saw the cellular vitality by its ability to aid both in energy production for the cells, as well as lower the energy burden for whatever other reaction that cell might be involved with. You have the youthfulness and longevity as we looked at the telomeres, again, those end caps on your DNA and the increase in the telomerase activity. So that is so two of the big things. And then of course you saw the effects on nerve growth and development and cell there's your mental acuity, your memory, your focus, and the big fancy neuronal plasticity benefits. So there we go. That's the old stuff. That's stuff that probably a lot of you already knew. Great, wonderful benefits. Well, as it turns out, gold has actually been used for a long time when it comes to joint health. You can see here back to the early 1900s, people were using gold in medicine. And in those times, a lot of it was for joint issues. And in fact, as in the early days of Gold Factor, it was actually tested in athletes and saw some benefits. And we'll talk about what that led to these past few years in just a minute. 
but it's been around as a treatment for rheumatoid arthritis for several decades now. Again, made a different way and it had some safety concerns with it. And so that's why it's always been as a prescription medication because of the way it was made and other factors in the way that it was provided. But the history is there for joint effects. And so we wanted to do this on our product as well. And so we actually tasked a researcher who had utilized the Gold Factor product in its early days and had him repeat basically the study he did then in a little bit more controlled and documented environment and something that we could then use as part of our stuff for Gold Factor. So every study has a series of what they call inclusion and exclusion criteria. So the things that'll get you into the study and the things that'll kick you out of the study. Inclusion here, obviously we wanted to have this with adults as the product is labeled for use by adults. We looked for people that had knee pain in particular and people who had gone through other therapies and hadn't received the results they were hoping. For. The things we didn't want, anyone with a current infection, anyone who had had a therapy recently, we wanted to make sure that Whatever they had done was far enough in the past, it wasn't going to impact what we were looking at here. Obviously, we don't want to work with pregnant and lactating women. That's a special group, it requires all sorts of different permissions and safety checks and stuff. And it's not really who we're targeting for. So that's a common exclusion criteria for a lot of studies. And NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Most of you will know these as ibuprofen, Tylenol, Aleve. Those that class of drugs. You want to make sure that they weren't currently taking. Again, we didn't want anything to kind of mess with the results we were looking at here and, and kind of complicate things. Study was divided into three phases. The first was eight weeks. We gave them three ounces of the product for the first four weeks and then two ounces afterwards. Now, this is a little bit higher dose than what we're recommending on the bottle now. And that's because this was the dose that the doctor had used previously and one he was comfortable with and where he wanted to start. And so we kind of made that little concession to let him do it. But as you'll look through and see this, there's a good indication that you'll get the same results that might take a little bit longer by taking the one to two ounces a day as currently recommended. Phase two is what we call a washout, about four weeks long. And this is where you don't take anything. So whether you're in group one or group two, you're not taking any products at all. And then we're going to switch things over. Normally, this is what I call a crossover design study because you, whatever group you were in phase one, you'll be the opposite group in phase two. However, we kind of switched things up here because we wanted to look at what's the long-term effect dosing here. So phase three, everybody got the product. We're in phase one, half the group got gold factor, half got nothing. In phase three, three, excuse me, both groups got gold factor at the same dosing regimen as in phase one. So this was a way for us, to, again, to kind of look at what happens if you get it for just a short time? What happens if you get it for long? Is there kind of this carryover lingering effect? Does it take a little bit longer for the effects to first come evident? Let's look at some of the different tests we used in this one. Now, there's a lot of things listed here. These are all the different measurements that we use to look at how things work. So Ku score, very complicated measure of basically mobility. So we're looking at different aspects of how they move, when it hurts, when it doesn't hurt, what's the range of motion. You know, can you move it this far before it hurts or can you go all the way kind of thing? general questionnaire on how they're feeling, what their perception of the treatment was. They were given physical therapy and exercises. So we not only had their opinion on how it was working, but a third party who did not know what they were taking on whether or not this person was showing an improvement across the length of the study. And this also included physical exams by the doctor and his staff Again, looking at these folks, and in many cases, they've been working with these guys for years, so they had a good history with them, knew what their kind of baseline was, and then were a little bit more in tune to see smaller changes where like the physical therapy and stuff may have been the first time that some of these people saw that. And then another thing called Dorsa V, this is 
a very precise, and I have a, call these instruments that look at your ability to move, how you move, the angles associated with it, the couple exercises they have to do, and they measure in, in simplistic sense how high they can jump when they land, how do they land, do they land straight, do they land crooked, and when they walk, how's the gait, all sorts of things that are all done with calibrated cameras and all sorts of nifty measurement stuff. Bottom line here, a lot of different things looked at. So we kind of covered as many bases as we could on what potentially might be impacted with a gold factor. And this is a very top level description of the results. So, you know, again, we went through probably some 30, some different points of measurement with these guys. This is five of those kind of summarized. So pain, we saw an improvement in pain here, about a 10-ish percent improvement there. Symptoms also improved. ADL stands for activities of daily living. So this is how well you can brush your teeth, you can get yourself dressed, you can make your breakfast, those kind of things. So people saw it was easier for them to go about life with this. Sports and recreation and quality of life are the areas where we saw probably the biggest improvement. So people that wanted to participate in sports or go out and recreate in one way or another were more able to do so after taking the gold factor and they reported an improvement in their quality of life. So just general health and happiness and how do you feel about your current situation? So some pretty cool improvements there. And again, kind of summing all up into three main points, 71% of the people saw an improvement in their knee pain. 61 said there was less stiffness and soreness in their knee. And maybe the most important thing here is that 70%, so more than two thirds of the people wanted to continue taking the product. They felt it made that much of a difference for them. They asked, how can I get it to keep going? Now, if I didn't give you enough detail and you really want to know the nitty gritty, well, here it is. This is published in a peer reviewed journal in an open access peer reviewed journal. So it is free for anyone who wants to, to go and look it up, download it, print it out, share it however you want. Easiest way to get to this is to go to the 4Life website. You're gonna go to about 4Life, go down to the science section there. And then most of the way down the science section, you're going to see a spot that says studies and publications. There, you'll see this one listed with a bunch of other ones, and it'll be a great way for you to get it. You can, again, print it out and use it however you want. And if you want to know the results of the Dorsa V, you want to know how the coup scores all ended up, this is where you can start, and you can read all the boring detail you want there. And before I kind of move on from this, let me just take a minute to talk a little bit about what open access and peer-reviewed mean. So open access, which I kind of already discussed, is it's free. We pay the publication costs. We pay all the, the things associated with getting it into a journal and making it available so that there's no copyright charges for any of you. You can go and read the article. You don't have to pay anything to do so. Peer reviewed is means that we went through, we worked with a doctor who's an expert in this area. He's done hundreds of studies like this. This is his expertise. He did it. He did it the way he's done many other studies. He did it following standard protocols and everything else. It's written up and controlled everything that we needed to do to make it a well-designed study. But we're not asking you to just take our word for that. What we did as part of this publication process, hand it off to the journal. They pick at least two, sometimes three people that are also experts in this area have written about joint health or maybe gold, liquid golds, that kind of stuff. Whatever is, whoever they identify as an expert in this subject area, they send the article out to that person, those two, three people, they read through it. They look at how it was done, who participated, how they were managed, the results that we saw, and the conclusions that we make about it and descriptions of the limitations and strengths of the study. They go through each of those points. They look at it and say, are all of these appropriate, done right? Are they drawing conclusions based on the data? Does this all match, basically? 
if all of those experts agree that the study was done well and the conclusions are appropriate for the data, they give their little check of approval and then it's free for publication. If they have any concerns whatsoever, it comes back to us. We have to address those, answer their questions, maybe make some changes to the way it's written, add in some data, remove some statements, whatever it is they don't like. And we go back and forth a few times until everyone is happy with it and they agree that this article as it sits is worth publishing. So everyone agrees, it's published, it's open access, so it's free for everyone else. So what that means in a nutshell is that it's not just us saying this is good solid research and that the results here mean something, but you have third party people not affiliated with For Life saying the same thing and agreeing that this is worthy of publication and notable research. So that is the same process we follow with all the rest of our studies. And again, through that studies and publications section on the website, you can see, I think we're up to almost 20 some studies now that you can look through. There's also some white papers, which are just us summarizing other things we've done in the past, giving you the same detail but it hasn't gone through this same checks and balances process. But take a look at that. Lots of good information. Anyone questions what was done, how it was done, print it off, send them the link, whatever. It's all there for you to use and to review as much or as little as you like. So with the results of that study, then we're adding some additional claims to the Gold Factor product and the benefits that it has for joint comfort, function, aids in movement, and you know, the whole pill fatigue thing, this is something you drink down. You don't have to swallow a capsule or a tablet, so it's easy to consume. And there you go. So there is Gold Factor in a nutshell. It's a great product. It's kind of a little bit of a, well, I shouldn't say a little bit. It is definitely a different product for, for life. It is not on the immune side of things. It is not a transfer factor product but it has just as far reaching of benefits as transfer factor does as it does impact the effects of every cell in your body by lowering the energy needs that cells need to do things, having those antioxidant benefits, helping to protect your DNA. So its ability to reach far and wide is just as big and grand as it is for transfer factors. So with that, we'll turn time back over to Jay Michael. Thank you, Brent. Thank you so much. Um, one question I have here in the, the chat, and I, I thought of the same thing. When is the best time to take it? Or so it, the answer I usually give to that question. Empty, empty stomach is one, but um, time of the day. So I think the, the best answer to that question is whenever you're going to remember to take it. I Like for me, I usually take most of my supplements in the morning. Well, I no longer have an empty stomach. I don't want to wait the 15, 30 minutes between them. So I take it before I go to bed at night. I usually haven't eaten for a couple hours. I'm not going to have anything. I don't have a bowl of ice cream sitting in bed. <laughs> so for me, that's the easiest time to take it. But you know, honestly, I remember to take my supplements in the morning a lot better than I remember to take them at night. So okay. whatever works best for you. Good answer. Gabby, I see you have your hand raised. Would you? Do you have a question? Go ahead and unmute. Yes, yes, I do. Um, so the study. Um, did you mention how many uh, ounces we were taking with the study to get the conclusion of, um, you know, just overall study? Um, because I know we take what two ounces a day, but how many ounces were taken for the study? to get the results they got. The study was a little bit higher than that. They started off for the first four weeks at four ounces a day, and then they went down to three ounces. So why do they go down three ounces? This kind of is, we had a little bit of back and forth with the researcher when we did this one. And when he first looked at Gold Factor like six, seven years ago, this was the dose that he used back then. That's where he saw the results early on. And so he wanted to go with what he knew. And so you know, we had established the two ounce based on other research and we felt that that was good. But 
that's what he wanted to do. He was the expert in it. We didn't see any reason to kind of fight with him on that. So he wanted to start off with four with the theory. And I think it's well supported in the research here that the gold does accumulate in the body to a point. And so for the first four weeks, you kind of call it a loading dose. It gets the body levels up there and then you don't need as much to maintain those levels. Cause again, really the gold is only lost as it becomes dirty as it, it, the surface gets fouled and it's no longer capable of participating in reactions. That's when at least our current understanding that, that it's removed from the body. So it does kind of build up and then you don't need as much to maintain those levels going forward. And as I kind of mentioned, there's still good evidence that at two a day, you can still reach those same at two ounces a day. You can still reach those same levels. It just might take a few more weeks and it kind of what we're getting back and feedback from the field is it, most people within the first month are still seeing those benefits. So we went with four ounces because that's what he was comfortable with. That's what he had done in the past. I'm not convinced that's necessary. Certainly can, but the two ounces from what we've gotten back so far seems to be providing the same benefit within the same time frame. So. Okay, great. Now I have another question real quick. Can I put it in my aqua toner when it's half full? <laughs> so have you done any studies on skin, like just the surface of the skin? We have not. We looked at doing that. Uh, it's unknown at this point how much of the gold will penetrate through the skin. The other aspect we have, as I kind of mentioned, when you mix it with other chemicals and other things we need to do to make a stable skin product, it's hard to maintain that delicate suspension. And so a lot of times as you do that within a couple hours, sometimes a couple of days, the gold has come out of solution and at that point, it's not going to have any benefit. So it's an area we've looked at. We're still kind of toying with it, but it, it's not a simple fix right now. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Another question here Dan, uh, from Dan, Dr. Brent, is how long does it last in your body? You kind of implied that when answering Gabby's question, but uh, review that real quickly again. How long does it last in our body? So we don't know for sure how long it lasts. It does appear to be a number of weeks. Uh, in looking at some of the stuff, uh, the care, like we did with the study, there was a four-week washout. So that's kind of what we've established right now as where most of what you've taken is lost. So it takes about four weeks to get up to peak levels. It takes about four weeks to lose it all. Okay. So you, as long as you continue taking it every day, you're okay. It just keeps yep. rotating through. That makes total sense. Any other questions or anybody have a comment to make? Dave, you want to comment on anything, Dr. Princeton? I know, D D Dave, you really have been a pro uh, advocate for this product. And uh, you've mentioned it in some of the other talks you've done. But uh, Yeah, I, I love gold. I love gold factor so much. Not only do I take it, but I give it to this guy right here, too. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he takes it every day. So um, he's because he's an athlete dog. I mean, the guy just I mean, he's very strong and energetic and I don't want him to have any any joint and uh, you know knee issues as he gets older. But a question I do have, Dr. Vaughn, you know how they did that study on transfer factors as far as um, uh, within two hours activating the immune system. Is there any type of research done on how quick these results or, or they take effect in the body upon consumption? All right, say that again for me. Okay, you know how we have the transfer factor study, which basically shows how within two hours it activates the immune system, right? Right. We have that transfer factor study. So is there any research on gold factor that shows that when you consume it, you know, how quickly you start to see some, because you talked about synapses, you know, of the neurons and so forth, you know, in the brain. Are there any studies that show how long how long it takes to see some of these results? So that's not something, well, in, in human trials, we've not looked at the time to effect other than kind of loosely with the, the joint study. And that one, and now keep in mind, you're looking here at a pretty large effect. It, it, 
to see a benefit in, in joint health is not something you typically see in hours. Right. So it's not the best type of study for that kind of question. But there were positive results as early as two weeks with some of these people. Okay. I think the best thing I can give you answer wise on that one is some anecdotal stuff that we've received that some people will notice. And I think the most commonly thing reported thing that I've heard is that the first night after taking it, they tend to have more vivid dreams. So Mm -hmm. that's a potential indication that there's something happening. And in that sense, you're here looking at a couple hours. Now it's not a major impact. It's not, you know, life-changing type of effect, but yeah. So there's some indication that you might see some minor things within a couple hours, but as I mentioned before, you're probably not going to see the biggest effects for about four weeks. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Wonderful. So that explains my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that I was thinking the same thing, Dave, my dreams, all of a sudden I noticed I've just multiplied and they're more vivid so. not only my dreams but my boy over here you know, that explains why he starts dreaming at night too he'll start he'll start talking in his sleep seriously <laughs> uh, well dr brent thank you so much for taking time out of your your evening in a holiday week and i know you're busy so we so appreciate you coming here and sharing this information i, I took a ton of notes i hope everybody else did this is recorded and we'll have it up on the YouTube site here um, hopefully very soon. Any other questions before we move on? We're coming up top of the hour here. Um, I don't see any other hands raised, but we do have uh, two announcements to make before we end this. Is our Jay, next- Michael, excuse me. I just want to tell everyone Merry Christmas. Uh, I'm dropping off with